about Steve Compella. Well, got banana tegwini. I think uh, he will add uh, a much, much uh, needed value at uh, Golden Arrows. We have seen that uh, the team has not done well. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Yeah, we're going to be chatting legendary stuff in just a second. It's not every day that we step into the studio and there's a lot of breaking news happening. In fact, you know what? Uh, it's going to be a different kind of business, though, in and around NASDAQ there at the FNB Stadium. Now, today it got a bit busy just next door to the stadium by Safa House as well. Uh, that's simply because the serious commercial crime investigation, uh, that's the unit called the Hawks, raiding Safa House, as we are told, that news as incoming. Uh, that is the home of the South African Football Association. Uh, seizing laptops, external hard drives, USBs, etc. Uh, the allegations that have been raised by the Hawks directly target the Safa president, Danny Jordan. Uh, let's uh, get more on this breaking news story. We are joined on the line by spokesperson for the Hawks. Uh, that's Colonel Katle Homokhale, uh, who joins me on the line right here on hashtag MSW. Colonel, thank you so much for your time. Good evening and welcome to the show. Let me try again, Colonel. Good evening. Good evening, Robert. Just the story obviously breaking and South Africans waking up to the fact that there was some form of raid at Safa House. Could you confirm that and what has happened in a bit of detail? Um, yes, uh, this morning the serious, corrupt, uh, serious commercial crimes investigation conducted a search and seizure um, operation at Safa House wherein uh, we were looking for information and documentation that would assist us in an, um, an investigation that is ongoing. Ongoing investigation, I believe, amounting to at least a minimum of 1.3 million rand. Is that correct? Um, yes. Uh, the allegations are saying that the amount involved is 1.3 million rand. And missing, stolen, what's the circumstances that you know? Um, the allegations are that uh, during 2014 and 2018, the president of SAFA used the organization's resources for his personal gain, including hiring a private security for his personal protection, a public relations company without authorization from the SAFA board. And the complaint then would have been laid by who, Colonel? Um, at this stage, we are not going to divulge uh, who is the complainant. But as the uh, investigation unfolds and people are getting arrested and we are uh, bringing the culprits before court, we will be able to say now complainant was who and who. Are you able to confirm for us that somebody has been arrested? Uh, not at the moment. No one has been arrested yet. And when the Hawks arrived at uh, Safa House, uh, was there resistance in terms of uh, what you wanted to do? Uh, no, there was cooperation all throughout. And if this points, as you say, to the Safa president, uh, Danny Jordan, was he physically present at the office? Um, that I, am not, I wasn't privy to. I did not attend the operation. And... Had that been the case, the that that was taken from the officers, whether it was laptops, like I said in the introduction, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm led to believe that it was a search and seizure type of operation, laptops, USBs and other documents. Can you confirm that those were indeed taken? Um, yes, during the search, uh, we seized a laptop, external hard drive, a USB and some documents. Uh, this will assist us with um, go, uh, the investigation going forward. And once that con uh, investigation is concluded and we have concrete evidence of who the culprits or culprits are, we will be able to effect arrest. Are you of any knowledge in terms of who was there physically or do they just grant you access into the building and you were able to pinpoint exactly the items that you're listing now to be taken? Um, a warrant of arrest, uh, rather a warrant of a search and seizure 
it will detail what is it that we are looking for and the management of the building and or residence will indicate where we can find those things. I mean, is, is there any expectation that the SAFA president would be arrested anytime soon? Uh, we will have to let that uh, investigation unfold as we have seized um, hard drives and laptops. As soon as we are able to link anyone to the transactions made as where the money went, uh, we will be able to effect the rest. Because I guess, in in your words, Colonel, that you know it's it's about using the organization's resources for one's personal gain, um, and personal gain including hiring a private security company for his own protection, uh, which I can then assume goes against the ethos of the association itself, and that is why you've had to enact what you did today. Um, yes, the allegation also includes the fact that uh, the, the 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 president violated the statute therefore producing um, SAFA an extra loss of 1.3 million. And that's uh, within a period of four years, if I'm correct? Yes, it's within a period of four years, from 2014 to 2018. And the 1.3 million would be a total that was used in that time period and not 1.3 taken as a once-off? Yes, sir. Any further steps as the public is obviously drawn into the story, what is next for the Hawks? Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to have these um, seizures that we are, or rather exhibits that we have taken through, be um, audited and investigated by our forensic accountant, and therefore um, enabling us to actually make an, an arrest. And how soon thereafter would you be able potentially to then have an arrest once all of that is cleared? Um, it is... It is um, will be overzealous of us to predict the how long. Because there is also other cases that these forensic accountants are dealing with as, as we speak. But there's a sense of urgency, I would imagine, here, Colonel. Yes, there is a sense of urgency. Anything else you can share with us as the public? Obviously, very minimal information. And, and again, thanks to you for affording us uh, this time at the last minute to really share with South Africans what exactly is going on. Is there any bits of information that you're at liberty to share with us? Um, at this stage, we will be sharing what we are sharing, but as soon as arrests are being effected, we will also do the same. All right, Colonel, thank you very, very much indeed. We'll be in touch with the office, as you say, as time goes on. Uh, Colonel Katlejo Mokhale, I thank you very much indeed, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Spokesperson for the Hawks, just confirming for us, if you're just joining us, the breaking news story that has been circulating around about the serious commercial crime investigation executing the search seizure warrants this morning heading off to safa house um, prompted by the allegations of fraud and theft amounting to 1.3 million rand allegations that are between 2014 as you heard the colonel saying in 2018 the president of safa and the organization uh, the resources that were used for personal gain uh, citing the hiring of private security company for personal protection a public relations company without authorization from SAFA's board. The president also reported to have violated SAFA statutes, uh, thus uh, prejudicing SAFA an actual loss of 1.3 million rand. I don't know what your thoughts are. Please feel free to share. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. NBA Africa CEO Claire Kamanzi with me in studio. Also Basketball Africa League President Amadou Galofold. Uh, there's been a long-standing commitment from the NBA to make sure that the game of basketball and the basketball industry is accessible, uh, is accessible to women. I think there's been a lot of initiatives that have been uh, uh, designed or started to, to make sure that you know women have an opportunity on the court to display it, showcase that they are, can be world-class athlete staff working at, across NBA Africa in the BAL who are mentoring young girls to show them that it is possible to have a career in the sports industry, in basketball. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW.
But yeah, what a game. It's always a big, 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 big honor to be able to play in this particular derby. Mm -hmm. Classified as one of the top 10 in the world. You don't get them many. You don't get many. And uh, when you're the coach of such a big institution like Kaiser Chiefs and you're playing against another big institution like Orlando Pirates, it is always an honor. And uh, the preparation that goes into this type of game is always very, I'd like to take the word intense away from it because in the end, it's about football. And uh, where we come from, we all enjoyed football playing when we were young. So we need to take that same energy into the game and enjoy the game from both sides. But we do know that we have to fight for the bragging rights of the derby within the African continent. So yes, we have prepared ourselves well for this particular derby. And uh, we're going to go out and enjoy ourselves in front of the 100,000 that we expect to come. I'm sure about 99,000 will be Chiefs fans. But uh, we expect that and we're going to go out and do our best. We've only received one goal and we've had eight clean sheets. We haven't lost in the last eight games or seven games. So it gives us a little bit of a light that whatever we were building is getting more and more solid. And uh, one of my other colleagues said, the best way to win a league. Yo, Kevin Johnson. But he, he, he just said, there are going to be almost 100,000 fans. 99,000 will be Kaiser Chiefs fans. Yo. Oh, man. Talk about uh, a big derby war of words. Not to show how the Bucks coach feels, man. Well, as usually, when you face these type of games, uh, I think we all, especially the professionals, uh, the ones who are going to be on the field, we need to do an exercise of uh, maybe an extra concentration to try to isolate ourselves from all the preparations and all the spectators around the game so we can perform in the way that, uh, that, that everybody is expecting us to perform. It's difficult because the excitement is, uh, is big. Like, mm. like everybody's expressing here today. Uh, but at the same time, in my opinion, is one of the keys that we can, we can silence, silence a little bit the noise and put the focus in what we do, what we do better, which is uh, play football and, and try to offer a good show to the, to the spectators in the stadium and also at home. The derby is giving us an opportunity to, to come back in a, in a good way, in a good style. It's the best opportunity, the best scenario. And even though we have only only two days of uh, specific preparation for this game, I think at this point of the season, we, we should be prepared for each and every game already. We know each other uh, more than okay, like, like uh, Coach Johnson was also express, expressing before. Um, the preparation for the game, at least for the coaching staff, start much early for the players. The, the focus was in the in our previous opponents, but from now it's uh, it's hundred percent in the next one, and the next one is is Kaiser Chiefs. The next one indeed is going to be Kaiser Chiefs, eh? Jose Rivero is the coach of Orlando Pirates. Certainly looking forward to the weekend. Are you? Give us your thoughts, your expectations. But have you bought your ticket? Is it still a thing? Where are you traveling from? Are you coming to the game? FNB Stadium, I believe. Yeah, near sold out. And to come back from the break, arguably the biggest fixture in the country. This one is one encounter that supporters, players, coaches, they all look forward to. It's kind of like a rivalry like no other within the African continent and African football. And this weekend, no difference, eh? Continent coming to a standstill. Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates colliding. 168th edition of the Soweto Derby. And trust me, no room for complacency. This collision between these two foes is extraordinary. Uh, kind of supporters sitting side by side. A lot of people have said that's very unique. It's a South African derby thing. Eh? Back in those days, eh, they used to bake the Pirates fans across the stadium. They, they would sit there. Chiefs would be having the luxury of the shaded side. Not anymore. Everyone gets burned there. But it's a kind of unity and camaraderie that would be completely alien. To supporters of Al Ali, for example, or Zamalek, or even if you bring in a Manchester City or Manchester United, they'll think, hmm, what on earth? I remember Dwight York commenting about that at some point, saying, hmm, this is very strange, Robert. They sit together. I'm like, yeah, of course, they sit together. They're united, but still foes. As for those fortunate enough as well to play in the game, it's a golden opportunity to be an instant hero with a top performance. Literally, turn up the magic. You're a hero. Butterflies all round. 
When you come back from the break, I mean, my two esteemed guests, <sighs> they're going to shed some light. One of them was a no-nonsense defensive cog at Kaiser Chiefs, solid as a rock. Also scored a couple of goals. I think once every leap year, he would score a goal. This good. <laughs> and it is a leap year, so if he was playing, hey, he would be trouble, guys. The other one, I guess the defender's worst nightmare. What a combination. But what talents both of them are. Absolute joy. Come back from the break. Our legends, Derek Spencer. How he does interviews, this guy. He's happy to be sitting in the in the plazini, there in KZN, chewing on sugarcane, Dikang Mabalane. Very busy man, but he's made time for us uh, today. I'm very pleased to say he's here in person. Arrived here at 3 o'clock. Yo. Hashtag MSW live now. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Very exciting to be in the country. Very exciting to see the beginning of season four. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Yeah, man, before we chat to our guests, let me just remind you again. And this is like a personal thing, because on Sunday, I don't know if you're excited, though, for the Liverpool versus Manchester City game happening on Sunday. Well, I am. I am for many different reasons. But I guess I'm more excited about how I can literally watch the game. In fact, how I can watch the Premier League going forward. So not just this weekend, but for the entire Premier League. And for the very, very first time, you, me, everybody else, we can watch the English Premier League on your mobile phone with Showmax. Yeah, simple as that. And it is a world first. You can stream all 380 games live on your mobile you can watch the highlights, these interviews, magazine shows, and a whole lot more. It is available on the Showmax Premier League mobile plan for just 69 Rand per month. You think I'm joking? I'm not. 69 bucks, guys. 69 Rand a month. Download the app today, and you can get ready to watch Liverpool versus Man City on Sunday. 17.45 is the game. It's the new Showmax streaming for Africa. Hi, Mr. Marawa. This is Muzungi, the Etim Kambatini. Hey, tomorrow, uh, no way, no way for Keza Chiefs to win the game. I know Keza Chiefs is playing on what we call a helicopter football, but there is a cog, there is a da. Uh, I, I, I think Oli Sanda will cancel Duba. Uh, and the Orlando Pirates have a uh, most experienced player than Keza Chiefs. Uh, uh, tomorrow, Orlando Pirates will, will win the game. And overseas in England, I think uh, Liverpool will strengthen uh, the gap between Man City. Oy, 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 oy. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marewa Ukuluma Nesbonga Leno Amkwan. It's a big one. Tomorrow is Soweto Derby. But uh, I think, Mr. Marewa, that game, I think uh, they are playing it very safe now. If uh, Chiefs dominate the first half, Pirates will dominate the second half, vice versa. So I don't see them uh, giving us that uh, exciting game. Going uh, abroad on Sunday, Liverpool against uh, Eman City. I think it won't be a title decider, Mr. Marawa, in the EPL. There is still a lot to play for with EPL. So irrespective of uh, what results are on Sunday, but it won't be a title decider. Thank you, Mr. Marawa. You know, when, when guys start to mention the words, got nothing to lose, eh? which is what I'm overhearing Derek Spencer <laughs> saying here in studio. Derek, uh, good to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Uh, evening, Robert. Evening to the listeners. Hey, Dick Hong, Mabalane. Finally. <coughs> good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Tarop. You good? Finally, yeah, I'm excited to sing here. Yes, we do. I mean, we've never had a guest arriving at three o'clock. I mean, that's like a, a world first, eh? Yeah, this guy was yeah. excited. Eh? He was excited. <laughs> no, I am. Hey, my man, I couldn't wait. Pela, it's my first time here. I know it is. And it's, it's been such a, a worthy way to... We'll have a one-on-one -on -one because you, your story, again, is, is fascinating. We bring you here on the eve of arguably one of the best... One of the best. In fact, the best <clears throat> derby games that we can look forward to. Potentially... 
On paper, yeah, it has disappointed from time to time. People say draws, people are not scoring, attempts yeah. at goal. It's one of those things. Uh, who's hosting? Is it is it Pirates? Eh? It's, it's a Pirates game, yeah. Mm. So you are hosting, Dekhan. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, I was overhearing you saying what you would be doing today. Uh, 29 minutes past six during your playing days. Were you in camp? Were you visiting... Sango Manana, what, what was going on? What were you doing at this time on the eve of a derby? Ah, uh, no need for Sango Manana. Zero. I mean, uh, yeah, well, unless others, maybe they see the need, but I was just born. But I, I mean, I think more than anything, Tarop, you, you already, you're nervous. Yeah. It's a big occasion. You already see yourself on the pitch doing this. Opposition, opponent, Lomuto Zobak Makile. What trying try to come up with a plan and the fans, of course. Yeah. The occasion is too big. You think it's just never because of walking into that pitch and uh, and Salzwani, everything yes, silently. I'm not coaching that, but there is now. There's no coaching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not the coach, I'm not the coach. So it's, it's, it's you and your thought process, basically, yes. that is trying to engineer how you're going to play the game, how yeah. you're going to walk out, how you're going to. I mean, the fans, you heard Kevin Johnson, uh, yeah. I saw you shaking your head when you said 100,000 yeah. are going to be there, but 99,000 will be kinds of Chiefs yeah. supporters. He's already playing to the gallery. And that mm. is beautiful to listen to because we want that, don't we? No, of course. Of course. Mm. I mean, that's why uh, it's about the fans. Mamela, I understand at this point in time, uh, you know, Chiefs and Pirates are not where they should be. Yes. But the Derby will always be the derby. That is something else. I think it's mm. it's a it's a it's a different arena. It's it's it's, it's iconic, you know, can come up with all these names. So you it's always about the fans. Yeah. It's always about uh Strattin, La Pika Raji. People will always talk about it. But until like two weeks before with the Mamela Tiam and Funu was the next Nina Jin Bashayin Labantu. He knows, mm -hmm. uh, and you get that all the time. But I think that's also pressure, also going into this uh, derby as a player. It's also mm -hmm. pressure, as much as you know, it's exciting. But it, Mamela, one thing about it is that it's exciting. I wouldn't. I, I wish every professional footballer would experience the derby. Yeah. I wish he would experience something like that, a stadium like that. Yeah. We know European leagues. Week in, week out, stadiums are full. It's, it's a standard. Yeah. Standard. Yeah. Nga pa, not every player gets to experience that. Sure. It's, it's yeah, actually, Derek, it's take a, over from that, man. It's an amazing experience. Um, just walking out of a, out of the dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> then you, then you realize uh, so you're confirming that so there's a whole... Yeah. So they're smelling of Muti, not you. No, not <laughs> then you realize, you know, this is, this is a war. Yeah. And when you walk out onto that field and there's... 90 plus thousand people mm. there and it's most the case of Chiefs because Chiefs always dominate even if it's their home game yes but we always oh, dominate oh is it it's, oh. it's Pirates home game oh okay yeah. but you're going to dominate on okay. the ground okay. dominate yeah oh, okay Yo. okay Bye, so He's, he's feeling very uncomfortable already <laughs> uh, just in terms of you throwing that little bit of shade what Dikhang said and I agree with him is that he wishes most professional South African football players could experience that. I mean, he has a boy from Esho with KZN and Makaya coming through, and you would be the pride of Esho and the broader KZN. And when you started wearing the Chiefs badge, firstly, and then you started stepping into the derby itself, wh what did that mean, firstly, for you, and then obviously for Aban Masa Makaya? Yes, it's Rob, it's, um, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game uh, playing in a derby. To come in and wear a Chiefs jersey where I've always supported Chiefs growing up. So putting on the Chiefs jersey on the Derby Chiefs and Pirates game, it's 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 an amazing feeling. You can't explain it. Were, were there pockets and moments where, I mean, you almost pinched yourself, Tikhang, to say, is this really me? Am I coming out? And, and, and remember then, just put yourself in the era that you were playing in mm. and what you were seeing in front of you, what it meant to don that Orlando Pirates jersey. What, 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 did, it, what did it mean to you as, as a player bustling with excitement, with energy, with youth? It, it's, it's, it always, when, when it's Dabi time, it's, it always feels surreal, you know, like yeah. um, it, it's always fresh, it's always new, it's always, we are too, man. Yeah. Uh, mm. what, am I really going to play this huge game? Now you start thinking about the fans, not only at the stadium, 
viewers, viewership. So it grows Your even family, bigger. Everyone you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they all have opinions so, as well. Yeah. No, you start thinking about that. But I think also I never I, I never knew Guti. Because football I played because it was fun. It, yes. it, it was just, you know, nyazala, nyazala, but I think now when you realize that, hey, Baba, it's bigger than you actually thought, yeah. you know, now you are something big. You, 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 you're huge. I never understood when they said your life will change when I signed the contract, by the way. Yes. Uh, for Orlando Paris. They said your life will change. Your, your, your life will be different. It will change now. You, you hear it, but it doesn't sink in until. <laughs> it sounds like a cell, mm. but yeah. then it becomes a reality. Yes. We're talking about Duba. He's a young boy, teenager, 19 years old, stepped up against arrows, did what he did. Now, if he does something similar, Derek, on the weekend, tomorrow, surely his life will forever change. It will change. It, uh, he'll be Chief's favorite player, yeah. currently, because whatever, people don't care what you've won or lost how many games in the season, but when it gets to Chiefs and Pirates, they forget about all that. If you win the, the derby, it's like you've won the league for them. Yeah. Even if the team has been doing bad. So it, everything changes. Even the, 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 the mindset, the attitude of the players change after the derby. That's if you win the derby. Yep. So everything that's changes. Mm. And, and, and that's a big if. Now, here's something that's really, and, and, and it seems very surreal, guys, because, <laughs> and in the week where we, we mourning the sad passing away of Umkonza. Um, th th there'll be something a lot of people would want to say. But when I play you the next, I suppose it's part of what is a tribute from us here on MSW because I spoke to many, many years ago. Um, but the irony ahead of his funeral this weekend is that this will sound like he's talking about what's going to happen tomorrow. And yet it happened back then. And that is why in life it's always important for us to make time, to create time, to create moments that will forever, forever live with us. You know, I just pump up the volume. Listen to this very, very carefully, guys. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. It's Bill Mkonza joining me right here, giving us analysis ahead of a, a much love so we're to Derby tomorrow. The Amushine ski is now Lemzanzi. It is taken away by Skrepili because people are so worried about results before the actual playing or the performance. Yo, and, Baba, and I was watching the games at Orlando Stadium. The old games, like yeah. the really old games. Yeah. The amount of passion, dedication, skill. You see, the skill factor got the people coming to the venue because it was rare. Yeah. But right now, we've eliminated that thing, too, and the derbies have become like so boring in terms of appeal. But where, where do you think the problem lies there? Look, or, uh, let's start, let's start, Lal Robi. If you look at English Premiership, mm. why this, the stadiums are always full? And they, they, as far as the quality is concerned, I want to quality into mm. the, the reason the, the stadiums are always full is because they haven't changed their identity. You know, they play power football, mm. and it has never changed. Tina, his skill is taken away, good in Matot. Coaches are more concerned about kick the ball forward. We want to play in the opposition's half and try to get a goal. In number 10, the, the, the guy that plays number 10 is bypassing. He passes because we're trying to get as forward as... If, if you look at all the teams now, mm. they just want to to take the ball wide, try to play a cross. But how do we play a cross to who? Do the strikers have the, the aerial ammunition? No chance. Because Tina, it's, it, it, it came here to... It's all about passing, skill, power. The only thing that has changed in, football, in modern football is only the speed and the jewels, one-on-one jewels. That's all. And the athleticism from... the from mm. the players nothing else that has changed why do we change from interspace to Guyo you understand what I mean and I'm saying now okay we have Paris versus Chiefs tomorrow is obvious skill versus hard work look at Kaiser Chiefs collective team they work so much as a team 
uh, they don't have those individuals that will say, yeah, but this this guy can turn the things around for them. Mm-hmm. Pirates, they've got so much because the quality in Pirates, I can tell you now, Robbie, they can beat anything. Oh, you're just going to tell me now who's going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> but let me be honest. Uh, <laughs> my worry, Robbie, it, Abby, now, it's because coaches are playing not to lose, but uh, I think the pressure now is on, is on Pirates. Pirates will win. Yeah, because they're going for a kill. Derby's form is taken aside. Hmm. You worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. It's an event tomorrow, so we need to go for a kill. Hey, <laughs> I've nothing to say. Your Honor. <laughs> they will still call you, you Ignatius. Yeah, <laughs> don't start. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you again Yeah, a journey on, my brother. It's Pimam Konza. Wow. You know, that interview happened on the 5th of December, 2014. You listen to that, it sounds like I spoke to him yesterday. Mm. And that's life, Dikhan. Mm. No. And you can't I fault agree. anything that he said. I hey? agree. I agree with him 100%, especially, by the way, I spoke to him a month ago, Tarop, yeah. a month ago. Wow. And I can say now he wasn't in a good space, but that's a, a conversation yeah. for another, another day. Anyway, what he's saying about our football, I, I agree with him. The product of football on the field, yeah. producing on the field, performance-wide display, I think that has changed. Sure. But commercially, probably mm. still sustainable, uh, you know, uh, but there's a difference. Yeah. I think it has changed. I mean, Uskizo, we better like Marathi, you know, um, when you look at other el- um, derbies, you know, mm. big derbies. I mean, mm. I can give you an example. Uh, Super Classico, uh, River Plate. Yes. Um, South America, South American, you know, that is still on on the pitch and of it, mm. you know, it's still a rivalry. I know mm. we talk about camaraderie, mm. you know, but I miss also that, you know, that rivalry where you know, hey, that's good. The you wrong, you know, they take it to that level. There's more to it. It's personal. It's yeah. personal, but yeah. also on the pitch as well. I think they still identify. With South American football, yeah, you know, Brazilians are Brazilians. Mm. Just quickly so, squeeze it in yeah. there, uh, Derek. Yeah, I yeah. think. And so going going in, going into the derby, I think most players and the coaches as well, yeah. they very. I think they're scared of the outcome of the derby because anything can happen after the derby. You can get fired if you lose by two or three goals. So they always caution caution about how they play. They're very yeah. tactical. And then the players end up not expressing themselves that much. So, in, in short, as we head into the break, they play not to lose. They play not to lose. Hashtag MSW live now. And I'm looking forward for the big one on Sunday. I think Liverpool are going to win this one. Thanks, David and Pargood. Good evening, Marawa Uzama. I'm excited about this way to tap in. I don't see Kiza Chiefs coming out live, like even be. I'm rooting for Pirates, true one. Pirates are win. Nyabongamalum. Hey, Robert Murawa, MSW, and your Pirates and your Chiefs legends greet you with a good heart. Thanks for the show. You know, and your listeners also, all our listeners, has got one thing in common. We love sport. We live for it and we love it. You know, what's happening at Safa? Nee. Sport is bigger. Football in South Africa is bigger than Safa. That goes to the background. The law will do their job. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait for tomorrow's derby. Uh, believe me. <laughs> and I wish both teams <laughs> the best <laughs> because I'm a sundown supporter. Well, thanks, Robert. Moi blai, moi blai, Hi Rob, uh, this is Tom Nyati. I think uh, God has answered the prayers of many South African soccer lovers. In as much as we don't wish anyone bad, but uh, this is a very good development for South African football. Danny Jordan, he has to be answerable. Everything that he did, which is wrong, and he has been messing with football in South Africa. So, on my side, I believe this is a blessing in disguise. Because 
in as much as we wanted the elections to remove him, he was not gonna they remove the violent election. Let's just hope he gets arrested and face the full road of the law. Thanks, Rob. This is Somia Dembe. Good evening, Rob. We are not surprised at all. Personally, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, we could smell a red for the longest time about uh, Mr. Danny Jordan. He had this dodgy, I mean, he still has this dodgy demeanor about himself and just how the organization is run. I mean, at some point we heard that the organization spends more money on administration, paying for administration, like running the, 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 the organization. There's more money spent on administration than on actual football. Once that report came out, I just knew that, you know what, um, this is one dodgy organization and one dodgy leader. And I think the, the masses of South Africa won't be surprised and would like to see this um, being uh, hastily uh, concluded so that we can get rid of the rotten apples in South African Football Association. Sakira Joan Inspect, thanks. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Dikang Mabaland is my guest. Derek Spencer is also here in studio the eve of the Soweto Derby. Taking lots of your WhatsApp voice notes, your calls. Let's look forward to the last 10 minutes of the show as we prepare for arguably the big showdown, the showpiece at the FNB Stadium. Uh, what are your memories? What do you expect? Are they playing the kind of football that you expect both of these teams uh, to be applying? What, what then, Derek, let me start <coughs> with you again. Um, Kaiser Chiefs, having Kevin Johnson come through, do a rescue mission, there's been a revolving door of coaches coming in and out. I can imagine the, the, the players may be confused. Different philosophies that are coming in and out. Now, what do we believe? What do we do? Is there a Chiefs way? Is there no Chiefs way? As a legend, put yourself in the shoes of the current players. Mm. How do you handle all of this? As, as a legend and as a fan of Chiefs, it's really sad what's going on there, Chiefs, current team. Um... It's been nine, ten years now yeah. without nine a trophy. Ten. Yeah. I remember when I was, I was still playing, if we won one trophy in the season, that was a bad season for us. Mm. Just, just imagine now, mm. nine years without a trophy. So for the players as well, I'm, I'm sure the pressure's on them to perform, um, to, to, to come out and really make it count for themselves. Mm. And... Um, and if they look back to the players that we had, Abu Skar, Abu Shoes, mm. I'm sure now but they get motivated. Yeah, boy. I remember this one time, um, I used to share a room with this guy. I used to call him rooms. Yeah. So we're sitting there, I'm playing PlayStation. Oscar, I forgot what he was doing. We'd say, hey, rooms. I think Lucky was the right back then. Yes. I think was the right back then. Why? I'm sure I'm going to go. <laughs> and he had the confidence yeah, though, the, eh? uh, that, that was yeah. him. so you you get motivated walking onto the field alongside players like Abu Skar Abu Shoes Abu Stiga Abu yeah. Mshavlan and the fans now so we don't have players like that anymore at Chiefs that's, that's the sad part we're not producing any players anymore. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's why you always go back to Tabumoke, Dr. Kumailo, you go back to Oscara. Um, and I think pretty much the same if you had to flip the coin and you go to a land of pirates because they themselves also had those superstars, players that carried uh, big occasions like a Soweto Derby. Um, your name would pop up because, well, Kutuza, you know, you were pickpocketing uh, the opposition. So the, the same conversation Derek talks about that he had with Oscara would have been somebody else now talking about what are they thinking about? They're thinking about you. Mm. Wh- why? Where has that gone to? Because, yes, it's a team sport, but certain individuals, people would pay money, top dollar, to mm. say, you know what, I'm going to leave Mpumalang just to watch Ujabu. I will leave wherever just to watch Steve Lekolea. Those were individuals within a team setup. Mm. Mm. 100% Rob and, uh, you know, as mentioned, with the quality uh, as a product of yeah. people mm. on the pitch also. That's what's probably missing. And maybe because also players are overcoached. Uh, sometimes I, th- I don't think they're allowed to express themselves because of, you know, the kind of football we're playing. I mean, it's, 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 it's no longer um, our, our natural, you know, um, 
vintage South African football. Mm. You know, it's 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 infused with other things, other other cultures, of course, which I think is the problem because now I'm a player, seba. You know, micromanaged now into an Isakunugus Dalela Yona and enjoy mm. football, enjoy mm. the game. I watch uh, some of uh, the boys in, in the in the in the you know the DDC as well where they play. Even they so we are born and lab. So yeah. I think I mean it's players expressing themselves. Let them let Gubena my character. Gubena my character for an abo, you know, Abu Shavul. You hear mm. Abu Steve. Because players are not the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah Abu Steve, mm. Abu you know, tell, me, tell me about Mfu Gang though. Yeah. For example. Yeah. I think he, he let him let him play. Yeah. Just just right now he's enjoying his football. Please let the boy express and himself. And scoring. And his scoring. And providing assists. Udalaranji yeah. in the DDC. Nothing has changed. So I hope he's well managed. Mm -hmm. Take care of him. We need players like him. And Uzo Itola Nale famous Omlandela, but at least let the boy enjoy his football. I think he's one of them, the players from Pirate side. Mm. I think that people, a lot of people are, uh, will be watching. He's young also, so yeah. let him enjoy the stage. Let him enjoy, you know, the, the opportunity that he's, he's getting. So tomorrow, he's got his opportunity. Be because then, w with you again, Derek, strange things happen. People say, no, he's, it's, it's too young. We're trying to protect him. We're trying to do this. There's no such thing. I love what Kevin Johnson said. He says, if you are young or old enough to be training, you are young or old enough to be playing. So why people talk about protecting? What are you protecting? What are you protecting? Because you're playing against the same people, yeah. even in training. So there's there's no protection there. So you just let the let the boy play, play his game, and don't don't restrict him much. Just guide him, yeah. show him what to do, and just... Let him go and do his thing. There was it's it's a funny thing though because even from a goalkeeping perspective, there used to be those rivalries that happen between Chiefs and Pirates within goalkeepers. Mm. You know, you can go back to the days of whether Gary Bailey had come back from playing for Man United, or it was back in the days of Peter Balak and Kamuzupanda, etc. There was that rivalry because whoever was the number one goalkeeper made sure, mm. or whoever was up and coming, you sit on that bench. Was if you're way too busy, I whoever's coming there, whether it's Itukuni or whoever, you're gonna sit and wait. But ten day shelle, Opara was there. Look I don't Kune. know. Look exactly. Kune, he, he, had had to wait. Wait. he had to wait. For, for a long for time. Chance. Yeah, and, and it took it took a while because you had players like Brian Malloy. Yeah. Uh, and then after Brian it was Rowan. Yeah. Rowan Fernandez, uh, quality players. That's but the then, players we produced back then. But do, do we have that? Can I? No. Sit so today and say Saturday, the rivalry between goalkeeper X and Y is going to be there. No, it's <laughs> nice. It's you know, as players, I'm, yeah. I'm referring to players, but nice, but politically correct, especially when they do interviews. No, as a team, when we work, uh, you know, we competing. Uh -uh. Mm. You know, we mm. have Yes, now we're training with Ziabuya. I want to play. He's coming. Yes. He's, he's putting pressure on me. Whoever is, is 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 sharing that position with me. I think I mean, I was always that. I was competitive. I went to a team, Pirates, when I knew good there's Makanya, there's cheese, there's you know, all these players. Mbuyan. Yes, I knew a good team, was eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to compete. And I remember know? my yeah. first Toby. Yeah. Yeah. He comes yeah. and stands next to me. He says, Hey, is he? He know how to the boy. Intimidation, yeah. He know how to do it, the boy. It is. Hey, what he just doesn't line up? No two two. Yeah. No gift. No soul, man. I'm looking at this man and I'm like, ah, this guy. <laughs> but it does something because I mean, th those memories live way long. To, yeah, he, that's his way of. You get under your skin. To, yeah. yeah, but also just to relieve himself because yeah. there was a lot of weight on his shoulder. Yeah. Uh, to deliver. I mean, I had Malombo Dichaba here couple of weeks back and we talk about you know things like jersey numbers the significance mm. of, a, of a of a 15 mm. that you wear at Kaiser Chiefs and yeah it's generational but you ask him and you say who's the best number 15 he'll say Yan Malombo Lichap he knows mm. dog came through dog took it to another level mm. and there's sometimes no need to compare but it's, it's just great to hear the humility my bag the ace mm. was there um, he took the game to a different level. Mm. On the side of Orlando Pirates, there's many different people. Yeah. Uh, uh, Boy, Jerisa Dike were there. Mm. Even your Julius K.K. Son, mm. you know, mm. Jomo Son. Mm. Mm. You know, those, those are players who would humble you at the best of times, but they did not like to lose. Mm. They didn't like to lose. What, what would be the, the deciding factor, guys? As we break it down, 
the deciding factor. Host team, you start off, Dekhan. <sighs> Look, uh, Rob, I think everything else doesn't matter. Deciding factor would be a team that wins. I, it, mm -hmm. I'm a draw. I think for me, also it's not about, with this game, it's not about just uh, the derby. The, they also want to get to the top. Remember, both both teams mm -hmm. are, in, are not in, you know, the really best positions. Mm -hmm. best positions they haven't been you know? doing well. So they want to get to that uh, second, at least, well, they're fighting for second for now. Um, but well, still, yeah, they so want to get to the Champions League. It's going to change anytime soon. saying for now. It's going to change anytime soon. So I yeah. think a, a win you go there for a win and they shouldn't be conservative sometimes it derby you know it's, it's KG I, I, I think they should go in there wanting to win both teams would yeah. want to mm. not point yeah. maximum point three points to get us to the Champions League fight for something because at this point in time the league is like 10 points 10 point gap at least yeah, try to get into the Champions League for something but also 10 games anything can happen I mean I mean, I look forward to someone scoring, saying, guys, I want to score in the first two minutes of the game. Mm. I want to have that Walaza mentality. Brr, whistle goes. I want to be in the record books. <clears throat> Just Derek. imagine how, how exciting it would be if it's 3-1, 4-1. Yeah, by the 20th minute. Yeah. So it would be exciting. I think um, Pirates are a bit under pressure because of the, the results midweek. Yeah. And Chiefs won, so Chiefs are a bit ahead of them. But I think... On the day, it's who wants it more. Yes. Who, who, who's going to go out there and try and win, try and uh, attack. But I see, I see both teams being defensive because both coaches, <laughs> they're not okay. So let's hope, let's hope it's an exciting game and um, the guys will go out there and try and, and make the fans Let's happy. do mathematics. Score. Robert, I mean, uh, unpredictability at Derby. When I told like, four, first half, that's possible. That's, that's happened. The three goals, first half. I, I want to see that. So yeah. uh, if I had to predict the score, maybe because I want to see that score line. Please. A 3-0. 3-0. Three -nil. Three -nil. A 3-0 three to, is it, is it, is it, is it, <laughs> You almost said cheese. No. Is it, is it, is it, is it, Derek, from your side, is three it, one, three one to Chiefs. Three one to Chiefs. Yes. Okay. So you guys go according to your loyalty to your former teams. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Former. I like how you say former. You played there. Yeah. yeah. No, that's you mighty. moved on. Yeah. No, I, you I, still I, wear the badge. I still wear the badge. We go like here, Namai. Like Namai is that's proud. My team. He's yeah? proud. <laughs> yeah. For, former former stalwarts is what we should call you. Guys, please pop around again soon. Love having you on the show, Derek Spencer. Good to have you. Thank Host you very much, for Robert. tomorrow, Dekhang Mabalang. You owe me an entire show, sir. Both of you, in fact, you owe me entire shows. Again, you got to tell the story. You got to tell the story mm. as it is. Good luck. To Thanks, Robbie. Thank, Thank you, you so Robbie. Appreciate it. Hashtag MSW live now on nine four seven Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW Marawa live on nine four seven.